Um, okay. Um, good, good afternoon to all the participants. Um, yeah, uh, welcome to the training session, benchmarking CVD sol solvers. My name is Sergei Lesnik. Uh, I'm working at Wiki and um, would be glad to to be offline at the the open form workshop, but um, because of circumstances, I couldn't make it. Um, yeah, I hope uh, we still can um, can have uh, uh, quality, high quality training, um, and uh, yeah, let's uh, let's start. Uh, maybe just for the to begin with, I paused for those who also participate online or just to want want to. Um, to run solvers uh, and run um, open form during the live session, I, I uploaded uh, the case which we will work on uh, to the Google Google Drive Cloud and post it in the chat. In the chat, uh, hope in the in the right chat. Maybe not. <laughs> Um, there are two chats here for some reason. Okay, let's let's start. Um, so this um, training is about uh, preparing a benchmark case uh, for a given open form case. So it's uh, it's not about um, directly benchmarking uh, some CFD solvers, right? So we, we want to uh, to look at how to prepare a good benchmark. Um, you will understand what properties a good benchmark should have. We will also practice uh, some, some basic stuff uh, of open form. It's uh, function objects. Um, we we'll also use Pyform for plotting. And um, if we have enough time, uh, also look into the coded function objects. Um, and um, yeah, um, maybe one of uh, practical thing is how to use um, examples, which are included in the open form, how to find them and how to use them. <clears throat> um, what is benchmark? benchmarking in general. So there are two types uh, of benchmarking for, for some uh, software. It's um, one considers the algorithm performance. So we um, care out measurements uh, for different algorithms, which solve uh, identical physical problems and probably on the, on the same hardware. Um, the second one is hardware performance, and we concentrate on this one in this training. Uh, you have the same code, uh, but it, it's run on different uh, CPU architectures or CPUs with different characteristics, um, or even some, some high performance clusters, right? And why is it there? Um, um, and why, why is it useful? Most of the time you want to analyze what parts of the code are the bottlenecks. So um, what uh, parts of, of the code you could improve uh, to, run, to run faster. <clears throat> and um, this uh, topic came up uh, during our work on the Exaform project. Um, the Exaform project is an uh, EU-wide project, and it focuses on bringing open form to uh, to Exascale. Uh, so um, the th these parts, like <clears throat> like the bottlenecks I mentioned, are very important in this sense. And there we uh, we prepared some benchmarks. And uh, actually, this training is based on, on our, our experiments. Uh, 
preparing the benchmarks. Um, so what are the requirements for a good benchmark? It's uh, first of all, execution time. Uh, you don't want to, to run for several hours uh, your benchmark just to have a result uh, of um, yeah, how, how many seconds per time step uh, you need. It should, be, it should be fast enough. It should be um, sim simple handling, should have simple handling um, for, for the people who use it that they can just run one script and um, they have the result. It should be reproducible. So the measurement results from two benchmarks uh, on the same algorithm and uh, on the same machine as to agree. Um, you predefined, if you predefined some statistical tolerance for this. And um, it also needs to be representative. So, uh, you have the case, open form case, which uh, um, considers some physics, right? But the benchmark should be somehow representative for the for this case. <clears throat> and um, what we will uh, look at today is the Pitts and Daly combustor. Um, as you as you can see here, I have a, a, a three, 3D um, geometry presented in this figure. So it's um, the combustor consists of an inlet section, which is uh, uh, which has a ramp inside it, um, and then a chamber is attached up to this. And the sole purpose of the ramp is actually to uh, to produce here a recirculation zone, right? Some some uh, separation at this uh, step edge or ramp edge. Um, and um, yeah, the this case is uh, related to industrial and aircraft gas turbine combustors. <clears throat> so, uh, as uh, yeah, as you can think, um, uh, the it's not the air which is flowing here; it's an air propane mixture. So it's some fuel which is ignited in the chamber in this section, um, and um, burning, burning here, right? So. <clears throat> Uh, you have um, at the inlet, um, the entry velocity is uh, 6.665 meters per second. Um, it's um, Reynolds number, it's about 22,000 for this one. Um, yeah, and uh, it, it's atmospheric pressure at the outlet. Um, so I think you have familiar with the name Pitts Daily. And um, there is a ve very popular uh, Pitts Daily case, which is two-dimensional, and it's a tutorial case uh, in almost all open form versions. Um, so this uh, experiment, uh, which uh, from, from Pitts Daily, it's actually the basis for, for this 2D case. And, um, but the original case was 3D and included combustion in it. <clears throat> so um, about the model, uh, we will use uh, Xiform. It's an unsteady compressible flow solver with, uh, with a combustion model. It includes uh, large AD simulation with uh, Van Dries damping function. Um, and, um, but for, to, to make it small, small and short for uh, for this training, um, and that you also can run it um, you know, on on your on your machines and not to use some some cluster for this. I, I made it really small. It's eighteen thousand cells small. Um, the resolution is too low for for an 
LAS, but it, it should be sufficient for the purposes of, of our training. Um, let, let's put this way, it, it uh, does not matter um, if the case uh, just, just runs. And uh, we turn the combustion off. So uh, just to keep the things simple. <clears throat> um, just to show you how, how the, does it look like if you run it with uh, 62 million cells, uh, which we did uh, during the Exaform project. So you see here the, the iso, iso volume of uh, vorticity magnitude colored by velocity magnitude. Uh, we have a shear layer here and it, it's getting quite turbulent after the after the step and uh, it's also burning yeah for for in this case um we have here temperatures up to 14 1400 kelvin <clears throat> so um uh, just uh to show you how, how does the, the case look like, we have here FV schemes. It's uh, it's second for the LAS cases, you need um, second order accuracy. So most of the setup tribes to to be second order. You see here many limited, limited schemes, um, also for convection of velocity, it's filtered linear. Um, yeah, but uh, you go um, also for the time accuracy. Uh, Crank Nicholson is a blend blended scheme, a foiler and a second order scheme. Um, for the solvers, it's it's pretty standard. Um, it's it's almost uh, always PCG, um, uh, and uh, we can. Be conjugate gradient stabilized as well, uh, and we use a pimple loop with uh, two autocorrectors. Okay, so um, yeah, I maybe I should also show the the control dict. Uh, let's if in here uh, into our case. So if you open up the case, you will see there are some all run scripts, all clean scripts, um, um, some Python files, but we just want to, to look at the control dict. Um, it's preset to run from zero seconds up to up to one second, right? And we write every 0.01 second. Um, Okay, so our first point, uh, first requirement for the benchmark is uh, to be representative. Um, and um, we have to decide what state of the, of the flow is representative for, for the whole case, right? So we have uh, some, it's, uh, this case is an unsteady flow. Um, and um, there is there is some vortex trading, and um, <clears throat> and so on. Uh, also, the question related to this is uh, what time period should we take as basis uh, for the benchmarking? Should it be directly from the beginning? Um, it it depends. I right if we if we start from from zero velocity maybe it's it's not a good um, a good start and how long should it be um, <clears throat> so um, here we can uh, we can assume that the flow is steady on average right and I just want to demonstrate it by by running the case. Uh, we have you can actually just just run the 
the all scripts. Um, we have an all pre-processing script. Um, let me show it here. We here we built uh, a block mesh dict using the M4 language, um, uh, which is um, it just some flavor of uh, coded in open form that means uh, that you can uh, you can use some functions um, built in um, to to produce your your parameters for the block mesh tick we just run run this one uh, produce a block mesh then we also need to <clears throat> To copy the original fo folder into the zero folder. All right, and uh, uh, yeah, we will decompose par. Uh, here on my machine, I decompose it to 28, but you can change it um, to whatever you want. Um, which is located in the system directory, and we. We'll just run uh, the all run script. We'll show it. What, what does it include? Uh, it just runs the application basically. <clears throat> background so we can uh, view. Um, good thing about these Oran scripts, you use uh, the functionality from um, from OpenForm, where the logs are automatically created. So uh, we've got here logs Xi form, and we if we tail tail it, we can see then that it's it's running right. <clears throat> um, Oh, I see. Uh -huh. um, okay, so let's let's just have a look. Does it, how does it look in in para in para view? Mm -hmm. um, oh, okay, here it is. And we we need to choose the decompose case, and we will look at the velocity. Just run. So as you can see here, it starts from from uninitialized fields. So we have uh, don't know exactly. I think some velocity introduced, um, but it, it doesn't. Uh, doesn't fit to the solution, of course. And um, uh, first of all, it, it just goes through the whole domain, and then it starts uh, vortex vortices start to form. Yeah, and uh, you have this uh, os oscillating um, flow. Uh, which which goes through the domain. Okay, and uh, yeah, here um, back to the to our uh, question, uh, what is representative? You know, you you can see there is a, it's definitely unsteady, and um, um, it's a good question which state and how how long. Uh, uh, from from what point in time until what point in time you should consider um, the your your calculation for the benchmark. <clears throat> um, slides and um, first of all, um, there are some guidelines, let's say, in in CFD um, how to. <clears throat> Um, to get an idea how long uh, should I, should my case to be run. Um, 
and it's about the characteristic characteristic time um, uh, characteristic processes and time periods of these processes so the first process is flow through time right for how long do i need that the um, uh, the flow um, traverses my domain from the inlet to the outlet right it's uh, and um, you should it, it just uh, some approximation so we just take the domain length and divide it by the uh, the inlet velocity um, it's uh, it's not completely correct because we have a ramp and uh, after this ramp the flow is accelerated right but again then we have vortices and so on just first approximation uh, what we get is around 65 milliseconds uh, the second relevant uh, characteristic time is um, um, has also to do with this separation and its recirculation time in um, let me show you where this graph so after the step here is the step we have some separation here and surely we will have uh, uh, some uh, recirculation um, appearing here um which <clears throat> which is also characteristic for for our flow and it's uh it may be uh quite slow for this to um to rotate one time right um we can estimate this this time it just the um uh, if, if we know the diameter of of our vortex approximately again uh, multiplied by pi and just divided by the tangential velocity uh, then we, we can estimate it um, you might ask where from do i have this data so i just run run the case um, here um, i know the diameter should would be the the height of this of the step right and the tangential velocity i can find out by looking at the uh, at the u in the average of course so um i have to, i have to build a, an average uh, for this <clears throat> um okay so and now we've got our characteristic times defined uh the general rule is uh, run at least twice the longest of this time so uh that that, that should be um oh point approximately 0.2 seconds right twice from this one it's better if you do it three up to up to 10 times depends on the case also you need to consider some special physics uh, for example if we would include combustion we we need to care about the ignition time period <clears throat> um okay let's uh let's have a look um how how do the residuals look like of uh, of our case <clears throat> and um uh, we can we can do it we uh our ca case is finished right L let me see i just run uh case yeah we are time one and now we have a log file uh from xiphon with the uh with the, all the iteration numbers and uh residuals um which we can analyze now and what we need we will need pyform um, and we use pyform plot watcher pi to do this we, we just need to supply the log file uh, to this one and what we are interested in uh, is the residuals plot 
uh, just to get the feeling uh, what now we have a feeling what actually uh, what are the characteristic times uh, at which time scale um, we need we need to, to look for the um, let's say <clears throat> Uh, for which period we need to look for the benchmark and uh, residuals we, we, we just check if uh, if what we figured out is okay because if residuals are changing on average uh, for for the whole run then there may be some other process uh, which which still um, didn't come to quasi steadiness um, for example um just look at the at the first 0.1 seconds um this is so-called initial initial transients so we have some un uninitialized flow and uh, um certainly the the solution doesn't fit to to the physics uh, that's why it's uh, it's going down here um and uh, at some stage as you can see here, uh, the on average, if you just uh, uh, um, plot your um, uh, uh, an average in your mind, um, um, you, you can see that uh, uh, this uh, this is actually um, quasi steady flow, or you cannot see, you can you can guess. Right, so we we don't want to guess. We want to to know for sure. <clears throat> um, that's why, um, yeah, I will show it to to you in a, in a minute how one one does it correctly. <clears throat> um, just to show you the uh, the mentioned sixty two million case. Uh, here it's a little bit different. We start from the uh, from the mapping of a three million case, so we don't have such a huge uh, initial transients here. So it doesn't start at uh, at one. <clears throat> um, uh, but still, we have some some residual uh, residuals just go down uh, because. Uh, yeah, the resolution is much higher for the 62 million case. <clears throat> um, okay, so um, what are the metrics uh, can we have for the quasi steadiness? Uh, first of all, it's, uh, it's just uh, a probe, so you you just put put a <clears throat> put a probe uh, onto some location and time average this probe. What we we will do here is uh, we get um, uh, average of the outlet velocity of over the outlet area, and we average this one. Uh, over the the time, right? So in the end, we have just one velocity with, with, which is averaged um, in space and time. And um, yeah, for for this one, we can um, then judge uh, is is the flown still uh, uh, still not um, at at some quasi quasi steady state. <clears throat> and we will do it with the function objects. Uh, one is called surface field value. The other one is value average. And as you might guess, the surface field value uh, is for the averaging of the area. Uh, value averaging is um, for averaging over time. How do I know about this function object? So um, it's your first first tool to use is uh, internet just uh, to to use some search engine or to go to see the online or to uh, official guides um, 
and um, yeah, just just to show you uh, this here. Um, for example, it's uh, it's the official guide from from OpenForm uh, V version, and uh, we can we can find here surface field value and some documentation on it. Um, and yeah, it's uh, um, most of the time it's uh, it's pretty good. But um, for um, for my taste, I like to uh, to look look up these uh, function objects uh, in the as examples in the um, source code itself. Um, and we can, we can just quickly do this. <clears throat> Uh, this one. Uh, so I just go to, to tutorials. Yeah, and um, what we do here, we just grab. Grab is here is your best friend. Um, we will grab for this for the name of this function object. Um, what grab does it does look in all the text files for the uh, for the word you submitted, right? Um, and hopefully we will find some case. For example, the the first one. To look into uh, where this function object is used, and voila. Uh, we are now in some control control dict of some tutorial case, and uh, under functions we have uh, a function object um, surface field value. So what what I will do? I just I will copy it and uh, I just start. And we'll just start some some editor. It's uh, use VS Code, but you can do it in, in any any of this one. Okay, I have uh, a treat of this. So um, now I'm I'm in my case here, as you can see on the on the left hand side. Um, with the processor directories, and I go into system control dict, and uh, in in functions uh, dictionary, I just paste this. Oh, it's a wrong one. I just paste surface field function. <clears throat> okay, we, we we renamed it to uh, let's say surface field value one. Um, our time control would be once once per time step. Um, okay, we want to to have a lock file printed out, and then we need to define uh, w which patch we want to average. And it will be outlet. Uh, the operation is called area average. And once again, you can find it out either by by looking for examples, or maybe it's 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 a better thing just to go to the <clears throat> to the user guide and uh, just scroll down here. There are uh, options for operation entry. One of them is is the area average. What we also want to have, and our field is velocity u. <clears throat> um, okay, let's try it out. Uh, we can we can just run the XI form, see the output, and voila, we have some area average of our outlet for for our velocity u. Okay, now uh, we need to <clears throat> uh, 
Um, now we need to bring it uh, just to one value. So for uh, we, we want to average average it over time. Um, and as, as I mentioned previously, there is a second, we need a second function object, which is called value average. Um, just, and you, you do it exactly the same. You go, um, so I would recommend that you go to the tutorial cases and grab for value average and see how, 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 how is it used. I just copy, uh, copy from a solution <laughs> uh, for, for this one. Um, and uh, um, yeah, one, the important entries here is, um, is function object first. We use uh, the function object from above. So it's called surface surface field value one. And then we, we need to define the fields, uh, which is coming from, from the function objects. And it's actually a tricky one. Um, I personally had to, to look on CFD online for the solution of this, because um, you need to know exactly how, how this um, field is registered in the registry of open form. Um, you can find it out. If you go to a time step, uh, some time step, 0 0.01, for example, go to uniform, to function objects, and look in function object properties. Then you will see uh, see what's, what's the name of this field is, which this function objects uh, generate. So in our case, surface field value one. Okay. Um, and um, yeah, one more thing uh, we need to take care about is that we don't want, do want only, um, um, yeah, actually we don't, we can try to do like this, that we just uh, look at the, at the whole run, run time. <clears throat> um, with um, I just delete. We'll delete the log file to run it again. So you, you need, need to delete first. Um, Uh, to run Cy form again with the with the log file, and we can we can look what's the <clears throat> what the output now is, and yeah, that's wonderful. We have uh, surface field value and value average as output. Sorry, um, yeah, so it's uh, it's good, but it's hardly uh, digestible for us. Um, and again, um, I here I use the Pyform uh, tool just to see <clears throat> how this uh, how these values um, change during the time. Um, here it's uh, you what you can use. Uh, so you just want to plot. What you want to do, you want to plot uh, these values, right, over time. Um, what Pyform already does, it plots these values somehow, um, but it doesn't know anything about about this one. So it's it's not the regular expressions for this uh, for these expressions are not there. Um, but good news that you can. Um, define your custom regular expressions and you do it with um, just by creating a file here called custom regexp <clears throat> and um, um, yeah let's find out uh, what should go into this file 
So uh, you can use um, another tool called Locate, available, uh, I think it's uh, an Ubuntu tool or, or Debian one, but it's, it's, um, it's also a popular one. Um, just to locate some custom regex file. <clears throat> there are a lot of them, uh, and they they come from from swag swag form. But if you look in inside, we can see how how does it look like. So we have some title here, some expression, um, and uh, these are the titles for the uh, for our curves. Um, don't go too into the detail, but um, I just wanted to show you how, how you will how you find examples for this. And I here I just copy what I prepared. Um, so we have an um, a velocity average at the outlet. That's the name. Um, then when then we have expression. And the expression is the um, one from the, <clears throat> the look file. Oh, that's wrong, wrong terminal. Uh, looks like this, right? What you need to uh, to consider is the, to escape special characters like uh, like bracket here, and then you capture the the values uh, with this with this syntax so let's have a look uh, save it and just run it again <clears throat> okay and now we have uh, an additional plot, additional to the to the previous one. It's called uh, U average outlet, and it looks like this, right? So as uh, as we expected, here we have some some again initial transients. Uh, here as well, something go, goes on right after one one point one seconds for the. Um, which one is it for the Y component of the of the velocity? But then it's uh, on average, it, it looks uh, steady. Um, okay, so now we can be, be sure that actually from 0.2 seconds uh, up until to the end, uh, we, we've got some some pretty nice uh, characteristic. Um, oh, let's say some <clears throat> state of the flow is the char characteristic for, for our run. <clears throat> okay, so mm, yeah, we check check on this one, on the function objects, on the Py Python plot watcher. Um, the next point, of the of the benchmarking, so execution time should be really short, because you you don't you don't want to run your benchmark for hours just to find out um, that uh, you you need some some seconds per time step, <clears throat> um, and um, how how do you compress it? So we found the representative time. It's uh, from 0.2 seconds until one second. Can we shorten it? Can we just cut it off? Or And if yes, how short should it be? The problem is that depending on the start and end time of the benchmark, the flow is uh, a different state, right? So the unsteady flow. Um, what does it mean? The iteration numbers alter. So they, uh, if we, <clears throat> if I just, if we take, uh, let's say from 0.2 to 
to 0.3, we start with very low iteration numbers. And if we if we take the period from 0.5 until 0.6, we have somewhat high iteration numbers. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I think it's uh, it's the residuals, but um, yeah, <laughs> uh, actually. I wanted also to plot uh, to show you the sorry to show you the <clears throat> the residuals plot, and I think you can do it with residuals. Um, with iteration. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so, sorry for <laughs> for this uh, misleading information, but um, yeah, you you see my point. So we we also can look uh, look into the, this window for for example for our benchmark, which is uh, completely different from from let's say this window. <clears throat> so the question is how uh, how do we solve solve actually this problem? Um, and the solution solution is uh, fix the iteration numbers. So just find out what's the average of the iterations numbered and uh, keep it the same uh, for your run. For this, uh, I I wrote. Uh, Python tool myself, um, which is uh, which reads uh, the log file and just averages. Um, uh, it is uh, aware about what are the inner iterations <clears throat> uh, of the um, of the solver for for each variable and the outer iterations as well. And just to demonstrate it to you. Uh, here you have to run it with Python 3. Check uh, each of time stats, uh, and you need to supply the log file. <clears throat> then you you will get some information about um, what uh, what is what was analyzed, right? what was uh, on average for the inner iterations and outer iterations, and what is the um, proper setup for, for the fixed iteration. <clears throat> so it's, it's pretty simple. You take the, the, the whole run, um, and maybe we should define uh, and print the help message. And we need... So we also can define what's what our start time is, just to ex exclude the initial transients, right? And then we we get we get the results. <clears throat> um, so the auto iteration this comes from pimple form. It's six for the velocity because because we have three components of the velocity. It's three for the density because it just just diagonal uh, solver. Uh, it's it's basically vector vector uh, operation, and we solve only once for the uh, for the k for the kinetic turbulent energy, which is part of the model. So we 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 cannot um, uh, these these two are independent, right? Of uh, of our setup, we we need to consider these three, uh, this the other four, and. Uh, yeah, what we do with this information, um, we just copy the case, the fixed data case, and uh, uh, copy the install case, right? It stands for fixed tolerance. So, up. and um, this name it to fixed iteration. <clears throat> and in 
our fixed iteration case again some uh, we we need to go here to FE solution what we do we introduce min iter minimum iteration uh, for the pressure it was 81 right um, and max iteration <clears throat> okay now it's uh, it's fixed uh, for the pressure at least we we can do the same for the for the velocity um, let's see it was for the velocity it was three <clears throat> Um, and so on, right? I, I, I won't do um, the whole thing, but you can see my point. And when we fixed it, we just uh, run the XI form. Oh, use another another tool from uh, PyForm. It's PyForm Plot Runner, where where you can run your your solver directly and have the plots. Uh, that should be enough. Okay. And we should run it with the uh, iteration. Just, just to be sure that the iterations are fixed. Oh, okay. So it's the order also matters. Okay, and as you can see here, uh, the iterations are fixed now. Okay, so now we solve the problem of the uh, of the how how uh, what period should we take? Uh, but here, the last point comes into play. It's the reproducibility. So. Um, how many time steps should we execute in fixed ETA setup? Um, can, can it be one, just one time step? Or is, is, there, is there some, some problem? So the problem is that uh, the hardware have, uh, is, um, because of the different load on the hardware, you might get some different results if you take the same algorithm and the same machine uh, for your benchmark. That's why you need to do some statistics. And uh, okay, we first uh, almost finished. And uh, the, the time is almost up, but just short to introduce you uh, to, to, to these statistics. I like this uh, figure from, from Wikipedia. Um, it's basically about if we have one experiment um, and our experiment is the benchmark, uh, which has uh, where we measure um, the time steps, how how long the time steps um, run in 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 seconds, and we do twenty, we repeat it twenty times, right? So we will have some average value for this. That's mu. Uh, some of these experiments um, will will be will have average, um, or basically all of these experiments will have different average, right? <clears throat> and uh, we can also introduce an error uh, for for each of the experiment. Uh, which let's say it's uh, it's one percent, or it maybe five percent, and it's um, shown by by these lines here. <clears throat> and um, mm, the thing is that it's um, in statistics. Um, if if you do if you want to do it right, 
it's a good practice to have 95% of your experiments um, to be uh, with this arrow bar to be within the, uh, the mean. And uh, this is called 95% uh, con confidence level, um, which, uh, which is stated actually in this formula. So um, you know, for, to find out how many time steps uh, we need, um, we need to find out what's the <clears throat> um, uh, st what's the standard deviation is of uh, our uh, our clock time, and what's the average of the of its clock time is, and what is the error, and um, it's um, I done it in the in the same script. Have it here. You can you can look into the into the impl implementation of this to find out how it's done. Um, but you can run it with um, with an option print stats. Right. On the log file. <clears throat> and you get some uh, some results on uh, how <clears throat> um, yeah about the statistics and how many time steps you need uh, for the run. So in this case, it just it's uh, one percent error. Maybe it's uh, it's too high. We just um, uh, we can define it to lower value or some higher value and we get we need to run 220 time steps for the confidence of 0.95 and 5% error of our fixed fixed iteration setup um, yeah so thank you very much uh, for participating in this uh, session I, I hope I could give you some feeling for for how to build uh, a proper benchmark and uh, i'm open to your questions so as as far as understood um, it's better if you post it into the chat <clears throat> um, or maybe you can use a microphone in the front of the of the room <laughs> if you are in person attending in person yeah Okay, so um, just just I, I answered uh, this question, I think to uh, either to nobody or the, just to the <laughs> to myself. Um, your question about the exaform progress, right? So um, for me, the progress is quite substantial, and uh, it's um, I have a presentation, another presentation tomorrow about the I/O. Of exaform, um, it's for me. It feels like quite, quite, quite big. So you are invited uh, also to participate uh, about uh, fundamentals of finite volume. I don't think they do much about it. Uh, more about the linear linear algebra uh, and uh, to to port it. Um, to GPU and uh, to also make it faster on on CPUs, uh, there is uh, a lot of a lot of work to be done there. Um, not quite sure if, if there are some presentations on on these topics. Um, sounds sounds good. So basically, you, you have another talk dedicated to that. So yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Uh, Thanks. It's it's tomorrow. I don't don't remember quite the, the time, but okay. Thank you.